Montgomery College has demonstrated its support for the Maryland Dream Act and Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival students long before the announcement to rescind the DACA program was made public on September 5, 2017. Montgomery College mission statement declares, We empower our students to change their lives, and we enrich the life of our community. We are accountable for our results. And what better way to illustrate this than by showcasing the successful and often moving stories of some undocumented MC students. When I found out my undocumented status, I knew I wasn't going to have a normal life. And as an undocumented individual, it meant that my chances in accessing higher education were much slimmer than those of my peers. And I didn't even know how I was going to keep on moving forward, being undocumented, not having health insurance, uh, and just pretty much with a certain death in my hands. Black immigrants are three times more likely to be detained and deported for criminal convictions than any other immigrant group. Welcome to Voice for the Voiceless. Hello, I'm Peter Pereira, and on this episode, you'll bear witness to some incredible accounts of students who were able to achieve their goals of attending a higher education institution despite the many challenges they faced. To start us off, here is Sara Monterosso. My name is Sarah Monterosso. I'm 20 years old and um, I've been living in the U.S. for nearly 16 years. Um, so Jonathan and I are two of 800,000 DACA recipients um, and we all have very unique stories but they're all very similar in tone. Um, you know, the commonalities between the stories are fear, <laughs> struggle, sacrifice, but most importantly, a hope for a better future. Um, so in 2001, uh, my mother, she flew me and my three other siblings here from Guatemala City. Um, at the time, Guatemala was going through a recession, and as you know, in many Latin American countries, um, it's not uh, uncommon to have corrupt governments and um, dangerous conditions to live in. Um, thankfully, we didn't live in any of the dangerous conditions, but my mother no longer had a job. Um, so her decision to bring us here was really for us um, to give us the opportunity to have a career, go to school, be educated. Um, so we flew here and we were on a tourist visa. Um, you know, what we thought was a trip <laughs> to the United States, um, we thought was going to be short-lived, um, ended up uh, staying here for 16 years. Um, so pre-DACA, so DACA um, originated in 2012. So the many several years we've been living here um, undocumented have been hard to say the least. <laughs> um, when we came here, we lived in one room, uh, five, five people in one room. So, you know, we come here, most of us don't have a lot of money and really have to build our way up um, to make it in the United States society. Um, so, you know, we went through <laughs> school programs and uh, we navigated our way through um, life undocumented. Um, and then in 2012, just a ray of light. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my sister. <laughs> it was some of the best news we ever received. Ooh. I was very unhopeful that I could go to college. I thought I would have to immediately join the workforce, and ironically enough, I wouldn't have been able to join the workforce. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I found out my undocumented status, I knew I wasn't going to have a normal life, and that I would have to struggle. But Montgomery College has been a blessing. So um, to backtrack a bit, I have an older sister, and she um, was one of the first rounds of DACA recipients. And she now has a bachelor's in science, in architecture, and environmental design. <laughs> and I hope to get there one day. 
um, my aspirations in life. Um, I want to be a journalist. Doesn't really work out too much because I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, but DACA has presented me with so many opportunities that I could never have dreamed of. Um, you know, I, I support my family with the income I make now. Um, I work at a Ben and Jerry's in Rockville Town Square. I scoop ice cream <laughs> for a living right now, and I go to school. I've also been um, uh, the editor-in-chief of the newspaper here at MC. Um, so I'm making my way into possibly having a career, and at this point, I feel like I'm at a standstill. Um, should I keep pursuing my dream, or should I take a step back and think, is it even worth it? Is it worth going to school? Is it worth working full time? So DACA has benefited my life in ways no one will ever know. Um, it's definitely given me confidence to do anything I want with my life. Um, and Montgomery College, you don't understand how thankful I am to be here. Even before I was a DACA recipient, I was able to pay in county tuition um, as a dreamer. So this school has benefited me greatly, and I just hope I can still come here and finish and get my associates and go to work. <laughs> so, you know, I just want to end this with, you know, pre-DACA, I struggled, my family struggled, but post-DACA, we continue struggling, but we have hope in our heart. As soon as I stepped foot on campus, I was met with endless support. I knew for a fact that my college was going to get my back 100%. My toughest challenge in my academic career has been dealing with my status. And as an undocumented individual, it meant that my chances in accessing higher education were much slimmer than those of my peers. One of my counselors, Professor Robinson, was completely supportive of us in starting up a student club where we could provide support for other undocumented students. We were able to start up a club and build a resource network and a safety space, and I don't see me being able to do this at any other college. I remember going to Annapolis and testifying alongside our president, Dr. Darion Pollard, as to why our state needs the Maryland DREAM Act. And Montgomery College has been supportive of undocumented students even prior to our DREAM Act legislation, but to be there testifying alongside our president as to why it's so important to invest in all of our youth, I think that was amazing for me. In the summer of my freshman year, I was able to intern at Georgetown University uh, in a pathology lab and live on at Georgetown for the entire summer. And the fact that like I was getting these opportunities at a community college was, I thought, phenomenal. Graduation at Montgomery College was one of my most impactful and favorite moments. Eve's Gomes with honors. And I remember Dr. Paula saying that students who attend Montgomery College change the odds. The non-traditional students, students who usually do not have access to higher education, can get their associates, can actually progress with higher education through our school. And I think I'm a testament of that, being an undocumented student, having all the support here for the first two years of my academic career, and to be able to pursue my associates made that dream tangible. My current plans now that I have my bachelor's degree is to enter pharmacy school and work my way towards becoming a pharmacist. Sarah and Eve's stories are not only extraordinary, but also touching and inspirational. These next two accounts are clear examples of resilience and perseverance. My name is Ricardo Campos, uh, and I immigrated with my family at the age of 12 after my father was life threat, threat in my home country back in El Salvador. Uh, as we were fleeing violence, we arrived to Los Angeles, California, uh, a place where I could finally grow up in peace, go to school, and feel safe once again. After living in Los Angeles uh, in search of opportunities, my family decided to move three years later to here to Maryland, the state that I've been considering home for the last 12 years. Um, I went to Kennedy High School here in Montgomery County. Uh, and as I was crossing through my senior year, uh, I realized how difficult it was to be undocumented. 
uh, how difficult it was to pursue higher education. Worry, while well, I worry about being, uh, about going to college and how I will pay for college, uh, I was diagnosed with bone cancer, osteosarcoma. Uh, this was terrifying. This was terrible. This was a very difficult moment in my life. I feel for death. I fear for death. Uh, and I didn't even know how I was going to keep on moving forward, being undocumented, not having health insurance, uh, and just pretty much with that certain death in my hands. I trapped myself in a sofa for over a month. Uh, but after that moment, I know and I knew that my family needed me and that I needed to fight. I underwent through a 36-hour surgery uh, in John Hopkins, hoping for life. I was confined to a wheelchair for over one year. Even though I was in a wheelchair, life made more sense. Uh, I was alive, and I was there with my family, with my loved ones. Uh, as I learned how to walk again, uh, I decided to apply for Montgomery College. Uh, it was extremely exciting. Uh, it was extremely, and I say extremely excited because I feel very proud as well. Uh, Montgomery College being the only college at the time that will allow undocumented immigrants to pay in county tuition, regardless of their immigration status. Uh, Montgomery College has always been exceptional and has been a champion on the immigrant rights. So together, we embark into fighting back in the time into something that was called the Maryland Dream Act, or a tuition equity law in the state of Maryland. There was an opportunity, not just for Montgomery College students, but for students all across the state uh, to make sure that they were able to go to school to pursue their dreams, uh, to pursue what they believe on, to pursue what, they, what we're taught during school, during high school, which is higher education and for a better life. As we mobilized thousands of youth all across the state of Maryland, we achieved victory. We won the Maryland Dream Act, not once, but twice, through the legislature and through referendum. My battle there didn't stop there. I continue pursuing for ESSA, the Every Student Succeed Act, advocated for uh, this law, and also advocated for DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival. Unfortunately, the program has been, uh, was canceled by the administration, uh, and 800,000 youth all across the nation are in danger. Among those youth, there are many of them who are in your classrooms, uh, who are part of our daily life. Uh, among them, also, there's uh, another 200,000 people with temporary protected status, which 40,000 of them live here in the D.C. metropolitan area. Our, line, our life is in danger right now. Uh, we could be sent to countries that we don't know any longer or we don't belong any longer. Belong any longer. Once again, our life is in danger. Since our life is in danger, on November 9 last year, 4,000 youth all across the metropolitan area decided to walk out, decided to show that we're, we are willing to stand up in solidarity with the undocumented community, and especially those who have lost their deferred action. 4,000 youth took over the Senate building and advocated for the life of other students, for the life of our community. Now, you as a faculty and administrators, you are agents of change. You are ag agents of empowerment, transformation, and miracles as well. You have the opportunity to engage with students every single day throughout this entire semester and remind them that they have the most powerful tool, that they can take our social security away or war permit away, but they will never take away our dignity and they will never take away our stories. <laughs> Remember my face and my name, uh, Ricardo Campos. You can call me Ricky. But let me tell you this, I'm undocumented, unafraid, and unapologetic. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Jonathan Jays Green, and I am undocumented. And I always choose to start my speeches saying that because I choose to reclaim my identity being undocumented in this country, understanding that for a long time, 
government leaders and people in position of powers have tried to use my undocumented status to deprive people like me of opportunities. I'm also fortunate to be the co-founder of the UndocuBlack Network. We are a multi-generational network of undocumented pe black people across the country, organizing our own communities and building power. There is close to 600,000 black undocumented folks across the country right, that understand and experience immigration from a racial justice perspective. There was a study by the Black Alliance for Just Immigration and New York School of Law that showed that black immigrants are three times more likely to be detained and deported for criminal convictions than any other immigrant group. And that doesn't really surprise you if you understand the ways in which blackness is criminalized in this country. So we, as UndocuBlack, are building power and fighting against it. Before all of this, I'm also a DACA recipient. And let's be clear, DACA worked. Um, when I received DACA, I was in the, my third year of school. I had finished Montgomery College. I had transferred to a four-year institution, Goucher College, and had used every private scholarship I could find. I was really literally on the verge of dropping out because I just couldn't afford it. Receiving DACA meant that I was able to work full-time and go to school full-time to be able to afford it. Having DACA meant that I was able to apply for a private student loan because I'm ineligible for any fin federal financial aid. And it also meant that I was able to graduate on time, hmm. right? DACA also meant that I was able to access op economic opportunities. I was able to buy a car, and I was able to apply for jobs in my field. After graduating from college, I was fortunate enough to work for the governor of Maryland and becoming the first undocumented person to work in the governor's office. I was, able, I was only able to do that because of DACA, because it allowed me to legally work in this country, and it allowed me to continue to, to follow my pursuits. And last year, I was able to buy my first home. Mm. Now, it doesn't escape me the concept of purchasing land in this country mm. and making a 30-year commitment to not only the bank, but also the city that I bought it in, Baltimore City, um, in the middle of the presidential election of the current occupant of the White House, right? What does it mean to say to my community that I'll be here for 30 years when I wake up every morning in a country where the government tells me that I'm not welcomed, right? But I still did it because our community continues to fight back and are resilient anyways. But I have to be honest, day in and day out, I'm more and more disillusioned with our country. As an immigrant, you come in with this shiny, beautiful idea of the American dream um, and this country being the land of opportunity and freedom. Um, and slowly but surely, you start to see that there are cracks to it, that there are asterisks to that dream, and that e opportunity is not equal across the board, right? Day in, day in, and day out, I'm disillusioned by our elected officials, um, by our, 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 our you know, law enforcement officials, by, by different institutions that are happening right now, but what really keeps me grounded is that I keep thinking about this little old college that was bold enough, that was bad enough, to stand with undocumented as soon as before it was popular, right? A college that was willing to set its own in-county tuition before the entire state caught up to it, right? a college with a board that authorized its president to fight for the DREAM Act because it believed that to fully be the community's college, we had to actually be affordable and accessible to the community, right? There is an incredible legacy in this institution here at Montgomery College that we need to continue, right? Because the future of our country is at stake. We don't if we don't understand that what's happening at the national level and really at the global level, it's really a test of our values. We, we're missing something. People like me, people like Sara, who so brave, bravely shared her story, are just trying to be, to be able to provide for their families, to survive, to just live in this country and thrive, right? So why is it okay to shut us out from opportunities? That is the question that I leave you with tonight. Thank you. And what a relevant and timely question that is. Therefore, 
it's important to remember that Montgomery College is committed to creating a welcoming and inclusive environment for all students, regardless of their documentation status. To that end, the college provides extra support for students who need help navigating the requirements of the Maryland Dream Act and DACA. Here are some available resources. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check the other Voice for the Voiceless series videos and don't forget to subscribe to Montgomery College YouTube channel. Until next time.